Good morning, everybody. Just waiting for everybody to join. We are, we've got a lot of people on the call today, which is fantastic. So welcome. It's fantastic to welcome you all to this session of our ASSC Talks, which is all about everything to do with responsibility in terms of tourism. We've been looking forward to this session for some time, but we've been having to wait for the right moment when we're finally looking forward to reopening our businesses and welcoming, welcoming back our hugely missed guests. That time is soon going to be upon us actually in more ways than one. So responsibility comes in many shapes and sizes these days from cleaning your properties to minimize the risk of any transmission according to the COVID-19 cleaning protocols to ensuring that both you and your guests are au fait with the latest restrictions and guidance. When can we welcome more than one household? Where can we accept guests from? We all have a responsibility in our marketing and our messaging and we have we have a responsibility to ensure that we comply with the health and safety legislation that may, if they get their way, underpin a licensing scheme. But more of that later. Don't forget to enter any questions that you have into the question box in your um, control panel, and we'll get to as many as we can later on. But any questions that we don't get to, we will answer and publish later after this session. So. Moving on, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to welcome two of Visit Scotland's best, who are both experts in responsible and sustainable tourism, Donna Bruce and Janie Newman. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm also really pleased to welcome back an old friend of the ASSC who has joined us at several conferences in the past, and I'm pleased to share this new virtual format with her and welcome Andrea Nicholas, Chief Executive of Green Tourism. Also joining us is our very own, own comms expert, Melanie Allen, who owns Nithbank Country Estate, a rural business which has a focus on sustainability, the environment and localism. I'm really looking forward to hearing all the latest news, trends and insights for us to plan our green recovery. Self-catering will, as it did last year, lead the way in reopening responsibly and safely and welcome visitors back into our communities to share all that is special about visiting Scotland. I'll finish the session off this morning with a roundup and overview of the Scottish road back to recovery, what we know, what we don't know, and what we're seeking more clarity on. I also believe that the First Minister will be making a statement at around 12 o'clock, so we'll be looking forward to any more um, knowledge and clarity around reopening. Um, we will be answering some of your questions and along with our panel of experts, we'll hopefully provide you with all the tools that you need to safely, responsibly and confidently reopen your business as we move out of lockdown. First of all, I'd like to welcome Donna Bruce to provide an update from Visit Scotland. Good morning. So I'm, I'm actually gonna hand over to, to Janie. Um, now, Janie's the uh, Sustainable Tourism Manager at Visit Scotland. And Janie has um, over 20 years of experience within the travel and tourism industry. Now, Janie plays a key role in Visit Scotland's uh, responsible tourism activity uh, with a focus on a transition to the low carbon economy and industry engagement on sustainable practices. So Janie's here today um, to provide an introduction um, to responsible tourism in a Scottish context and uh, the opportunities it can bring. So, Janie, over to you. Great, thank you, Donna. Um, I will share my screen and hopefully everybody will be able to see that. Great, so um, although obviously on the reopening of tourism and welcoming visitors back is on everybody's mind and, and very, acute at the moment, really wanted to use this opportunity to think about responsible tourism and, and taking the longer view and opportunities to, to build back better and, and what that often used phrase potentially means for tourism and, and responsibility in the broadest sense. So I am uh, you know wanted to thank you, uh, Fiona and the ASSC for having us here today and having the opportunity to, to look forward and see so what we can all do together to support Scottish tourism in the future. So um, I'm, as I just said, I'm starting with a crises slide. So as Fiona said, no crying into your muesli, but I guess for setting the scene, it is important. I mean, COVID has really dominated um, our lives for the last 
year or more, amazingly. Um, it's been that long and it has fundamentally affected all of us and especially the tourism industry and, and will shape tourism for many years to come. And will also potentially off the back of that provide an opportunity to review what that future tourism will look like. Because there are other um, interlinked, separate but interlinked crises that we all have to deal with and that um, work on tourism. That climate change, unfortunately, hasn't gone away in the meantime. Over tourism, seems silly to talk about it now, but everybody's aware that over the last summer and some areas of Scotland, when visitors could come, there were pressures on certain destinations with too many visitors. So it's still something we need to be aware of. Um, things like biodiversity loss, growing inequalities, um, and also changing consumer trends. So these are all things that are, have an effect on Scottish tourism, but that Scottish tourism also contributes to and stands to suffer its impact. So there's an opportunity here for the tourism sector to, to think about um, how can we be part of the solution going forward um, and to help address some of these crises and really build a positive future for Scottish tourism. So responsible tourism is there's really some of the insights and trends that my colleagues have looked at is, is almost like looking to be the next normal. So there's a shift from you know people being tourists to travelers that they want kind of a more purposeful holiday um, and something more transformational travel. So they don't want to just I mean, everybody kind of wants to go to sit, go and sit on a beach somewhere, but there's increasingly that demand to really experience the destination, you know, that, that localness, that, that doing something else, doing things a little bit differently than before. And see, and businesses, visitors will look to businesses to kind of show their values and help them kind of do the right thing and, and help them be a catalyst for change. There's the, the areas around slow tourism, so maybe well, I have to travel a little bit less, but travel better. So spend more time in destinations, experience communities, traveling with a purpose. And as much as um, COVID has dominated our lives, interesting research has shown that 71% of the global public still feel that climate change is a significant and, and long-term crisis. So um, it, it hasn't diminished this awareness. It's only ever growing and, and visitors and your customers will will look to you to see, um, not that you're supposed to solve climate change, but within your, your capacity, how you can be more responsible and they will respond positively to that. So this last year and, and ongoing has really made the world reevaluate values and perspectives and there's an opportunity to, to build back better. As many of you will be aware within Scotland, the Scotland Outlook 2030 tourism strategy um, with its tagline of responsible tourism for a sustainable future was really is really supportive of the overarching responsible tourism messages and even in the tourism recovery plan which is being developed now for the next five years to bring everybody back to to, to that starting point and the first minister announced um, a funding package recently to support the recovery plan for the next year and there was a clear um project in there about the net zero pathway which looks at climate change opportunities um, so really what what do we mean when we talk about responsible tourism the important thing here is that it thinks about the in, environmental economic and social impacts of tourism we're looking to maximize the positive impacts so it's not just about doing no harm or less harm but it's seeing about tourism being a force for good um, and really with the the, the idea of creating better places for people to live primarily, which are also amazing places for people to visit. So it's always been very much a visitor centric um, kind of focus about what does the visitor want and that's what we have to do. But it's important to remember that the visitor sits within that broader picture of the communities and the environment and that's why they come for. So increasingly it's also a, um, a, a kind of in, sorry, an area that um, the environment is, is important and the communities and the value that that brings. Of course, the phone has to ring. <laughs> so the, um, the areas that, um, 
the areas that are the key pillars that Visit Scotland is looking at and that are also reflected in the strategy are supporting Scotland's transition to a low carbon economy and ensuring that Scotland is inclusive as well as protecting the natural and cultural heritage and really encouraging and considerate enjoyment of that. And, and communities are becoming ever more important within this as well. So it's a really community-based ensure that those communities are thriving and benefit from tourism. So um, there's a lot of information on the following slide. I just wanted to give some ideas of what you can do to get involved, but I'll just focus on a few things and maybe you'll have an opportunity to go back to follow up on some of those links. Um, and these are really just some starting point basics and many of you might have already might already be doing these, especially around the, the transition to a low carbon or net zero economy. You'll be hearing lots more about that this year as um, Glasgow will host COP, which is the UN Climate Change Conference this coming November. We will should soon find out about the format of this, but there could potentially be um, 30,000 delegates to Glasgow and hundreds of thousands of civil society that engage with this event under normal circumstances. So quite a few of you might be hosting some people who come here for COP. So that's a great opportunity, but it really shines a spotlight on the UK, but also on Scotland. It's an opportunity to showcase what we're doing as a nation, but also as a tourism industry to help tackle climate change. Scotland has, um, the Scottish government has set some very ambitious targets to um, achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2045 and a 75% reduction by 2030. So these are all really numbers, but, it, but there will be a view to see how everybody can support this. So there's an opportunity for every business to see where are you at now? Um, what are your carbon emissions, your carbon footprint, and how can you kind of support everybody to get there? And, and you will benefit as a business from saving money, reducing your carbon footprint, and being able to show what you're doing. So the key point here that I would recommend for every business if they haven't done it is get an energy assessment for your cottages. And this is a free advice and it's a virtual assessment at the moment from the Energy Efficiency Business Support Service. And a lot of that, that energy assessment is also a fundamental tool and to access funding. So there, there is currently funding and there will potentially be even more funding for businesses to implement changes. So, but this is kind of the starting point. So if you haven't had that done, that will be useful to identify and prioritize opportunities in your business and to access funding down the line. But the low carbon economy also considers things like low carbon transport, electrical vehicles, and um, potentially installing electric vehicle charge points, promoting local and healthy food and reducing um, food waste and single use plastics and things like that. So it does cover quite a lot. Inclusive tourism is also an important one. Um, I believe that, that there might will be another whole another webinar around this and the opportunities that you can um, take here to really tap into that inclusive tourism market and making your business more accessible. So often you think about um, wheelchairs and things like that, but only 80 by 80% 80 of disabled people have hidden impairments. So they're not necessarily in a wheelchair. So this might be, they might visually impaired, hearing impaired, they might have um, mental health issues, autism. So there's a whole host of things that you can do to welcome um, visitors. And they often travel with family, they're very loyal. And it's, it's a really a, a market, a good market to tap into. And even domestically, which will be our key markets for the next few years, um, there's a significant UK population that have a disability. So again, here the top action would be if you don't have one yet to create an ac accessibility guide for your business. We have an online tool that you can use for free. Just put in the information because that's what a lot of visitors want is just clear information so they know how they can plan um, their visit to you. Thriving communities, like I said, increasingly become important. The key um, thing here I wanted to speak about, and hopefully many of you have seen it, that we've recently, um, Visit Scotland has been involved in, in a visitor management and the leading on a visitor management project after some of the incidents last summer where visitors haven't behaved as responsibly as they potentially could. So in advance of reopening this year, 
we are keen to get messages out to local and domestic visitors to, to really think about what they're doing when they're out and about, whether that's littering, how they park, where they park, um, and, and really trying to reduce their impact on the natural environment, but also work with the local communities. So there are opportunities for you to get involved to help spread the uh, message, their visitor pledges, or promises and, and messages you can just print out and put in your information on site and also use on your website and various channels. So I would encourage you to do that as a, as a key point around here because um, I'm sure many communities have noticed how much tourism does contribute to their community, but it, when the tourists come back and, and they don't behave that well, then you know that's maybe not the impression that we want to create for the tourism industry and that they are we are a force for good. And natural and cultural heritage as a final pillar. It's really about, um, I guess, for self-catering, much about promoting the natural and care, cultural heritage in your area. Pre-tip um, to let people know what, what they can see in your area so, so they can plan their trip, but also when, when you're on site. And to make sure that that information is engaging it is really useful to, to enhance that visitor experience. The year of coast and waters, which was supposed to happen last year, has been um, shifted to this year. So there's an opportunity to get involved there. We did create some uh, 20 green tips for the year of coast and waters all around um, protecting the marine, marine environment as well. And off the back of many a David Attenborough series, um, that's also something that the visitors really um, are interested in. And again, I, some of you might have seen me speak um, at the year of coast, at the last um, in person conference about the year of coast and waters. This isn't just for those who are by the sea, but um, you know, any kind of water um, aspect could be included and promoted. And cultural heritage here is also think of food, think crafts, music, dance. There's such a wide opportunity to really promote that, and visitors will be looking for that information. The promotion of all of this is key. So make sure you promote your responsible tourism commitment. If this is what customers are looking for, they need to be able to find it when they come on your website and social media, use all the available channels that you have and provide clear and engaging information. And here's um, using certification to provide credible evidence and build that consumer confidence. So many of you will know about we're good to go, especially in line uh, in connection to COVID, that um, if, if you don't have that or are not part of that yet, I would strongly encourage everybody to look into that self-certification and you get the we're good to go mark, which you can promote to visitors. And anybody who has that will also automatically get the safe travels mark from the World um, Travel and Tourism Council, which is more of a, a mark focused for international visitors. So. That's, there's a clear sign, as Fiona mentioned, about being responsible about hygiene and, and all these measures. But then obviously more responsible tourism related, there's other certification programs like Green Tourism, which Andrea will tell you more about, and also Green Key. So being a responsible tourism business will help you as a business build your resilience, save costs, meet your customer expectations, but also will be an investment in the future of of Scottish, Scotland as a world-class destination. So, and, and that's an important thing that I think we've all noticed now that when, you know, it's not just a bunch of individual businesses that you're part of your destination and we're all part of a broader destination and working together can help everybody in that respect. So happy to take questions later, but um, that's it for me for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janie. That was a, a really good insight um, and a, a really good overview in terms of what responsible tourism is. And it's clear from the um, from Janie's presentation that it's it's not just about um, you know re reducing that um, carbon footprint. It's everything else that comes along with that. So, as Janie said, questions uh, will will be left till um, after the, the speakers are finished. And I see that there's uh, quite a number of questions um, and discussions going on in the chat box already. So, um, just like to um, welcome Andrea, um, who is um, the chief exec of Green Tourism, which I, I think probably most of you have um, potentially heard before. 
Um, Andrea, over the, the last 24 years, has um, assisted in the development of green networks and certification programmes throughout the UK, Europe, New Zealand, Sweden, Canada and Africa. Wow. <laughs> um, with over two and a half thousand members in the UK and Ireland, the, the Green Tourism Programme um, actually began in 1997, which Andrea was a, a co-founder. Um, so today, Andrea is going to give us an insight into the, the growing uh, trend and demand for sustainable um, tourism for consumers and some top tips um, for a green recovery and how to attract um, greener customers. So, Andrea, over, over to you. Right. Thanks, Donna. And uh, good morning, everybody. And thanks very much to Fiona and her team for inviting me here along today. Um, <clears throat> nice to be called an old friend, Fiona. I'd rather be called a friend, not necessarily an old one. Uh, anyway, uh, right, straight away into the wrong slide. So let me just go back to the beginning here. Oh, sorry. It was all working so well before we kicked off. There we go. Right, so I'm going to talk to you today about um, the fact that the world is getting greener and uh, thanks to Janie for an excellent um, introduction there because things are definitely getting greener and actually so are, are the consumers, um, even with COVID uh, and what's happened over the last year or so, um, we are seeing an, 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 an increasing number of businesses and consumers wanting and demanding greener options when they're uh, getting back to travelling. So. Um, Jenny's mentioned a couple of these, but the kind of uh, trends that we were starting to see before COVID and are still continuing is people like the OTAs having more sustainable options on their booking websites. So booking.com recognised that through a survey that 71% of their customers wanted to have more sustainable options to book. And actually 86% of people when they were on holiday would actually be quite happy to do something green, such as a, a litter pick or, or get involved with a local community project or plant some trees or something like that. Um, there are other initiatives that have come along. Tourism declares a climate emergency. Visit Scotland and Wild Scotland have already signed up to that. And it's something that you could consider uh, within your, your own business or potentially ASSC could consider looking at, at committing to that. And uh, recently, just this week, um, sorry, last week, the STA conference, the First Minister announced the recovery uh, programme that's been put in place. And, and one of those key targets that, that there will be funding available for over the next uh, five years is a net zero pathway to help tourism, Scottish tourism industry become more green and sustainable. Um, and as Jenny said, there is some funding around at the moment, but there will be more coming down the lines, especially for doing some of those practical, sensible, uh, cost-effective measures to reduce your carbon and reduce your running costs. I saw in the chat there was quite a lot of conversations about EV charging, so I've, I've put up the link to the uh, Energy Saving Trust website where you can get uh, access to that, that grant. But there's also a, an interest from, from the consumers, and, and we, we know this through the fact that the, the travel agencies and the, the travel industry out there is starting to use that kind of terminology. In fact, regenerative travel will be the next key word that, that you will start to hear about, sustainable, responsible, regenerative travel. And that's, again, about consumers and customers wanting to, to help the businesses, the places that they're staying, that they're visiting, wanting to heal them, making sure they don't damage them and leaving them in a better place than when they found it. Um, even the rough guides have identified nine travel trends for 2021. First one is surge in sustainability. Um, secondary increase in female travellers, great. And um, domestic travel, obviously, we realise that around the, the restrictions there still will be. I've put some stats down the side, but again, Euromonitor, which the Scottish tourism industry works very closely with, identified 76% or more were concerned about sustainability. Uh, Britons believe that, that the health of the planet and people is, is inseparable um, and that sustainable tourism is more important. And, and I love the quote from Earth Changers. This is one of the new kind of green um, travel agencies or, or uh, conscious and, and socially minded travel um, businesses they're saying it's not about less it's about more the things that matter and I think that's a key message that we use when we're talking to anyone about sustainable or green tourism it's not about reducing what people are getting it's actually about giving them more 
enhancing their experience and encourage them to, to get involved. I've got a, a top five tips. Um, I, I'm not gonna go into lots of technical stuff about EV charges. I'm happy to take questions around that, but I wanted to point out some of the very, very obvious things that we find regularly when we, we meet and talk to people and businesses that they aren't doing or they are doing and they're not telling people they're doing it. And this is, this is I think, one of the biggest issues we come across is that people want to hide all the good things they're doing and you know, being a bit humble, which I, I can fully understand. But actually, your guests are interested and, and you don't have to um, rub their face in it. It doesn't have to be like all over your front page, but it can be in the information that you're conveying to your guests about the fact that you care. So things like um, supporting a local biodiverse uh, uh, initiative such as the John Muir uh, or an environmental project, you might be involved with a, a local community tree plant. Angie, Angie, sorry to be a pain. Your yep. slideshow's not, we're okay. still oh, on the oh, first sorry. slide. I'm so sorry, do you mind just? Yeah, sure, so I can three. understand why that's, why that's not working. We will share the slides later anyway, so don't so, worry. So, but what, so what slide are you on? Um, You're still on the first slide. We are on top tip one, show them you care. Okay, I think, I think it's just going very, very slowly. So um, did you see the second slide? No. Okay, I will go, I will go slowly. Uh, if someone can tell me if they've seen the slides, that would help, please, Fiona. Okay. Um, the second tip, uh, which I'm hoping you'll see in a minute, um, is about sharing your green story. So this, again, as I mentioned, um, is something that people find that they, they, they don't do enough of it, but actually your guests are interested. Can you see that slide now? No, I think it might be because you're not in actual presentation mode. You're just, um, we're seeing your full screen rather than... Okay. It does say I'm sharing. Strange. Um, and the fact that you saw that slide was interesting. There's top tip. There's top tip two. Okay, I think it's just going very slowly, Fiona. So I can talk very, very slow. No, I won't talk slowly. It's not in my nature. Um, I'm sorry about that, folks. Hopefully, we'll catch up, and I will. Um, the, sh the shares, the, the slides will be shared afterwards. Um, so sharing your your green story again an important aspect of, of showing from a credibility, from a transparency point of view. And again, it's something that a lot of businesses don't do. Um, and it doesn't have to be preachy. It's not about um, lots of rules. It's about making it personal and specific to your business and actually helping you to um, tell your story in a nice way that engage with your customers and get them involved in what you're doing. And, and and what we, from what we've seen from and heard from businesses, customers really interested in that kind of thing. The next slide, which hopefully you'll see in a second, is about inviting your guests to help. So this is about getting them involved in some of the initiatives that you're doing, but also some of the things that might be happening locally. So there's a, a, a term called a give back or a, 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 a nature-based contribution uh, program which you could set up um, the, the, the slide shows something um, visit Scotland uh, visit England sorry have got a, a great toolkit about visit give protect um, but it's also about giving them your guests uh, things like equipment that they can use like reusable bags making sure you promote uh, the green itineraries and activities in the area and a lot of information about you know leaving no trace that kind of that whole regenerative not wanting to damage and wanting to heal the destination that they're in and even potentially offering them uh, the ability to carbon manage their, their, their visit by uh, actually um, calculating how much carbon that they've um, used in getting to you or whilst they're staying in your cottages um, and actually giving them the opportunity to donate to a local charity in order to uh, carbon balance that, um, that carbon emissions. Top tip four is, is I think an obvious one, hopefully you're all doing it, it's about promoting and using local. So it's, you know, whether it's local food that you're using in your welcome hamper, or it's promotion of the, the local farmer's market, you might be using local crafts that are produced 
in, in your area and promoting those craft people to, to your, your visitors and encouraging them to go and, and meet them and, and understand um, how their, their lifestyle works. It's quite a trend at the moment to, to live like a local, that's the term live or eat like a local. So there are some schemes in Europe where um, you can actually go and, and, and you can book to, to, to go to somebody's house and actually have a, a, a meal in somebody's house. It's a traditional meal that's, that's produced, that's, that's you know, uh, representative of the destination. But giving your, your guests information on where the local information is, what they can do to hide, find the hidden gems, the kind of things that they might not have seen on a, on a listing in a, in a, in a brochure or a, a guide, but something that you're aware of that really highlights the best uh, of your destination, and especially if there's uh, a green angle to it. Um, the next slide is about getting recognition. And I think, again, um, so Green Tourism is not the only award out there. There are other awards that are available that you can, um, and, and many of our, our, our members go on to, to achieve these awards because of the, the measures they put in place around um, their Green Tourism Award. So there's uh, national awards like the Vibes Award and, and Thistle Awards. Um, unfortunately, you'll have heard the present the, the announcement this week that um, this year's Thistle Awards aren't going ahead, but they will be going ahead next year. Um, I sit on the industry group for them as on the sustainability side of things. And the sustainability elements of the Thistle Awards are being massively increased for next year. So it will be like a minimum standard that um, all entries in any category in the Thistle Awards will have to address what they're doing for sustainable and responsible tourism. There are other international awards that you can apply for, uh, responsible tourism, tourism for tomorrow. Um, the website at the bottom left, if you can see the slide, um, is uh, Boost. Andrew, we can't, I'm afraid. You might have to do it. If you can't go into presentation mode, you might need to just do it manually. Okay. Can people Sorry. see that? Can you see that then? No. I'm, I'm, let me stop sharing and share it again and see if that makes a difference. We thought we tested everything, didn't we? We did. No, can you see that? We're on top tip five. Right, good. So that's the awards. Um, so you, might, you might just need to do it manually if that would be yeah, okay. And yeah. we will share all of these slides, slides um, afterwards, so don't yeah, worry. Not, not a problem. Um, you, well, if you can see that slide, you can see the slides previously. Um, but basically uh, the awards, that the website at the bottom there lists all the awards that, that are available in, in the UK and you can look at them at categories. So you can look at all the green awards. Um, my last slide is, uh, or oh, not my last slide, my last few slides is, is about green tourism. Um, as uh, Don said at the beginning, we, we started in 1997. Um, I think we might still have some businesses that are members of Green Tourism that are part of ASSC that were, were members back um, 20 odd years ago. Um, and the, the year before COVID, there were 41 million visitors visited a Green Tourism visitor attraction and 27 million people slept in, in a Green Tourism bed. Um, within the self-catering sector in the UK, we have 403 uh, self-catering members. In Scotland, there's 186, of which 43 of them are ASSC members. Can you see this slide, Fiona? Yes. Can you see this one, the dashboard? Yes. Ah, oh, good, right, solved it. Okay, this is important because this is, this is the, the, the new development that we've been working on in green tourism for the last um, 18 months or so. Um, we, we'd been working on this before COVID started and when COVID kicked in it, uh, we realized this was going to be a great uh, support for us and for businesses because it's a, it's a digital online platform called Green Check. Um, it is a way of businesses preparing and getting ready for their uh, green assessment. It, so it's a tool to help businesses understand what they need to do, what they need to prepare, what kind of evidence we're going to look for and help them work with their teams and within their business to put in place measures that will help them reduce running costs, help them engage better with their customers, help them work more closely with the community and also achieve a, a bronze, silver or gold with green tourism. Um, the platform includes all of the, the, our criteria but um, if anyone is, is a member, you'll see that the, some of the, the headings are slightly different. We have 
spliced and diced our criteria to make them into 15 different sustainability goals. Um, and within each goal, there's a series of criteria, but it, we, we wanted it to be in, in bite-sized pieces so that businesses could work their way through it, um, work with the, the aspects that were relevant to them uh, and work through those processes at their own pace in their own time. So when you get access to the portal, by clicking on one of these icons, you get access to a series of questions and, and information and help on how you can implement measures. It's like a, a, a digital version of your green file, if anybody is a, uh, understands what I mean by that. Um, and it's something that your assessor will use when the assessment actually goes ahead, because all of this information that you put in there will be available to your assessor so they can give you uh, relevant advice and help you achieve the award that you want to achieve. It also has an action plan built into it. Um, the next guide, uh, which gives you an example of the kind of questions, it gives you some information about the, the topic, a detailed description of the criteria, um, and it also shows you how that question is aligning to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which you may be aware of. Um, these are becoming more and more the, the, the guideline for industry and, and countries and governments in terms of being able to recognise what they need to do for sustainability. Um, and there are targets built into that, that, that the, the world is, is trying to achieve by 2030. Um, if anyone's interested in getting more information about the SDGs, then I'm, I'm happy to send that on to people. But within this um, tool, you have I functions, so you've got more information. There's a, a help system, so you can have like an interactive chat with your assessor or with the support team. So it's all very, very interactive. I mentioned that you can get, um, uh, an action plan. So as you're working your way through the process, it allows you to add things to your action plan. You can add in your own actions. We've got ones already pre-populated. You can uh, indicate whether they're in progress or completed. All of this information is then stored on the, 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 uh, the platform so that you have access to it at any point and it can be downloaded to share with your assessor or with your colleagues. The um, the criteria, as I said, is split into three sections, which are caring for people, caring for places and caring for planet. And we have got uh, uh, like a, a pre-assessment checklist, which lists all of the um, criteria. So if anyone's interested, um, either as a current member or considering membership um, or, or wanting to go for an award, then please get in touch and we can send you this so that you can have a look at this in advance to understand what it is we're, we're looking for. And just um, my last slide is, is, is really about just hoping that uh, if you want to find out more, that you will get in touch with us. If you look at our website, um, sorry, can we see this slide? I'm talking around it. Yep, yeah, we can. So, good. Um, there's a little 10 minute quiz. It doesn't, it doesn't even take 10 minutes actually, but it's called the Green Check Quiz. So if you go onto our website, it just asks you a few questions. It gives you an indication of where you might be within green tourism. You can, as I said, ask for that criteria checklist. Um, we currently have a, a, an offer, which we've had for many years with the ASSC, um, which I'm hopefully everyone who's a member um, knows about that, um, which is that the registration fee in the first year is, is free and the annual fees are discounted at 10%. And, and on the Embrace Scotland website, there is a, a dedicated page to um, green tourism. So it is something that um, the organisation is, is promoting to their visitors. Um, and as we mentioned earlier on, COP is happening in November. So we have a special hot off the press offer, which I know you will like an offer um, for the ASSC, which is around COP26. Um, and for new members, if you want to join before the 30th of November, then we're discounting the registration fee and, and your annual fees for this year will be 50% discounted. We actually discounted all of our current members um, fees by 50% for last year, so they, they haven't lost out. Um, and if anybody is a member and didn't receive that discount, please get in touch with me because it's an oversight. Everybody was, was offered 50% off um, and then ongoing uh, a 10% discount. So I'm sorry that the slides didn't work. Um, hopefully um, I explained things so you understood what I was talking about, um, but please do get in touch. And uh, if anyone wants the checklist or to find out more about joining, then um, just get in touch. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Andrea. Um, Technology is always great, but um, when it when it works, <laughs> um, and great to hear that um, the 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 actual membership offer fifty percent off. So um, there we go. There's there's an incentive for for more people to to sign up to the scheme. So next up, um, we have Melanie Allen, um, who I'm sure most of you will will already know. <laughs> um, so I think, as Fiona said, um, Melanie runs uh, the, the Five Star uh, Country House in Dumfries and Galloway, um, which focuses on um, sustainability, environment, the environment and localism. So, uh, Melanie, you're going to provide an insight into the business and um, how you achieve the, the sustainability focus. So, over to you. Thanks very much, Donna. I'll just show my screen. And do presentation. There we go. Hope everybody can see that. So just to give you a bit of an introduction, um, this is um, based on a case study um, we've recently done for Visit Scotland back in um, September, October time um, for the um, climate change week. Um, so it's giving you just a, a bit of a, an overview of what we're doing, um, how we established ourselves. Um, so we're in Dumfries and Galloway, um, and um, we've been established for uh, about three years now. Um, when we were looking to um, open up, um, we looked very much into um, Visit Scotland was, was our first port of call. Um, and obviously set, setting up, um, we, we consulted Visit Scotland, um, had an audit, and also did a lot of research. There's a lot of information on visitscotland.org, which I'm sure a lot of you use. Um, and it was really down to research, um, you know, the local area and things like that. Um, so it was, it was a great resource for us to use, and we continue to use Visit Scotland and all the toolkits and everything that they provide. Um, and we also, um, looked into our environment um, because we're situated in the Galloway Southern Ayrshire Biosphere, um, which is a UNESCO designated world-class environment. Um, it really set us thinking about how we, um, as a business related to that um, and came across green tourism. And actually the green tourism principles fit in very well with the, the biosphere and UNESCO principles. So we actually set out looking at how we could apply this to our business, what that meant um, and what we needed to do to achieve it. Um, and both um, schemes were, were really good um, in the fact that we assessed our operations um, and worked up towards achieving those standards. And it was an ongoing process um, that we really analyzed our business and, and all the elements around that. Um, we actually first um, first time achieved a silver um, in uh, green tourism, but then had some set guidelines as to what to work towards in order to achieve a gold, which was really useful for us because it meant that a lot of um, a, a lot of the things that we needed to do were around marketing um, and really telling people what uh, you know what we were about. Um, and the same with the with the vice visa certification mark being uh, a local scheme. It was um, ensuring that we were really integrated within the community. So that really set us um, set us going um, in in order to promote NIF bankers operating with a conscious conscience. Um, so in 2019, we achieved our uh, Gold uh, Green Tourism Award. Um, we also are now certification holders for the Biosphere and a five star um, with Visit Scotland and also became members of ASSC. Um, so with regards to our operations, we looked at um, planning and what that meant. Um, because we're in such a beautiful location, we feel we've got a responsibility to nurture our environment and to share that with our guests. Um, in order to do that, we set out our green story. As Andrea mentioned, it's a really good way of um, 
really visualizing what that means. Um, so we set up six principles um, that we work from, um, in, uh, starting from caring for the environment, um, wildlife and habitats, um, pr promoting that within the grounds, um, supporting and promoting local talent, um, being responsible um, in everything that we do and promoting local. Um, and we also have our own kitchen garden and promote organic. Um, so promoting sustainability um, and enjoying things on the doorstep, reducing energy and water consumption. So just briefly to go into each one of those and how we share that story with our guests. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are already doing these kinds of things. Um, it's just hopefully to highlight a few opportunities um, because the things that we do in terms of um, all of these themes we really try and share those stories either on social media or um, make our guests aware when they arrive um, of the things that we're doing so um, we all we um, provide um, natural products for our guests to use um, local soaps and bath salts that are made just a few miles down the road um, we also have um, sanitizer that's made in Scotland and that's organic as well along with the toiletries from Ishka um, and we do a lot of social media around that. Um, we promote wildlife and we're linked in with Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels with our local squirrel group and the Scottish Wildlife Trust and we also get involved in schemes like um, the, the Butterfly Count and also the RSPB Bird Watch. Um, and promote that on social media. Um, we've got a lot of bat, bats as well. So we've got bat monitors um, and um, promote that to guests as well when they're here. Um, we support local businesses um, from things like um, a local chef that got made redundant last year, who's now doing afternoon tea deliveries. Um, so we're working with her to build up a programme when we've got guests back to have afternoon teas. Um, providing boots and mats for um, people to use if they're not prepared. Um, that's a, a local company that's now making um, welly boots. Um, so it's just linking in with little things like that that really add um, something a bit different to guest experience. Um, we do a lot of collaborations locally, so particularly with Galloway Cycling Holidays, uh, who are out on their bikes most days, um, and we've um, worked with them. We've now got a drone and they provide drone footage on a lot of their routes that they cycle, which is a great way to show people the brilliant landscape that we've got. And that has opened quite a few doors for us in terms of promoting the area. So it's really amazing what um, opportunities happen and, and you know, what comes together um, when you've got a, you know, a few like-minded people. Um, so go, go, go talk to people and, and just look at different opportunities. It's a, it's a really, really good thing to do. Um, so the sustainability element, we um, try and promote as much as we can. Um, we've got, uh, we do a lot of work with green tourism, promoting uh, the schemes that we've got going on, um, different changes that we make to the business. Um, we've actually recently had some um, belted Galloways um, that we've got um, to promote. They're a, they're a local breed and we're looking when we um, have guests back that they'll be able to come and feed the coos and really enjoy that experience. Um, and again, we've got guests that post about their experience um, on Instagram and social media, um, which is really good. Um, we lo use local surprise wherever possible. Um, we grow our own, um, we've got our own kitchen garden and orchard, um, but we also try and promote as much local produce as possible. Um, that's even down to providing, we do a lot of special occasions, so flowers in hat boxes um, and, you know, other, other local products, um, hampers and things like that. So that's really, you know, kind of adding, adding value and also promoting local businesses as much as we can as well. Um, so 
at the moment, I think with COVID, um, Visit Scotland have obviously launched um, the responsible approach to reopening. And I think this is very much about seeing Scotland with a fresh pair of eyes. And what we've realised being part of the um, UNESCO biosphere is that people visiting our area, it's our ordinary, ordinary, but it's their extraordinary. And it's really looking at your business and your, your area and seeing it as a, as a destination in itself. Um, so what will your visitors and um, your guests see that maybe you don't see? Um, so what things can you do? Um, what things do you take for granted maybe that they you know, might think is extra special? So I think as par part of this whole process is um, looking at um, your business as a whole and the things that you might want to promote um, that you might not otherwise you know, kind of see yourself. Um, also look at your visitor touch points, um, so provide positive messaging throughout, so check out your websites and make sure that they're linked in with your social media, make sure that your um, OTAs uh, listings are all, you know, similar and that you're promoting the things that you really want to promote. Um, send your guest emails before they arrive, um, inspire their visit um, while they're visiting, and after their stay, have a think about how you can reconnect with them and keep in touch. So um, we'll be sharing Visit Scotland's responsible approach um, and their uh, Keep Scotland special film. When we came out of lockdown last time, we shared their um, uh, uh, visitor uh, charter, which was really useful for guests to have an idea of um, you know the, the types of things that um, that we were doing um, as they were visiting Scotland and the types of expectations as well. So um, before they arrive at the moment we provide guests with an update um, on via email on travel restrictions, uh, share the Visit Scotland um, information. Um, we also um, put things on social media um, give them ideas of opening times of local places to eat and visit, um, attractions so that they can pre-book. Um, and if, if you get the opportunity, upsell, upsell local produce, um, food boxes, any add-ons, um, that will really help build up your um, margins um, and also promote local businesses as well. Um, in our guest books in the rooms, we, um, we do a brief visitor charter um, just to give visitors an idea of the area and some of the types of things they can get in, involved in. A um, particular one for us is the uh, dark skies. We're in, we're close to a dark sky park um, and it's um, when the, we've got opportunity with the weather um, to kind of get outside and, and look at the stars and also to educate them about um, light pollution and the effects that it have, has on wildlife. So it's really interesting to take that perspective as something that uh, visitors wouldn't normally think about um, is the effects of artificial light and actually being comfortable um, with the darkness. And we actually provide headlights with a red lamp um, which is more um, effective actually in, in, um, in the darkness um, and better for wildlife. So it's just little touches like that that really does help with the guest experience. Um, and finally, sharing stories and keeping um, messaging going after their visit, um, encouraging reviews and telling new stories. So constantly updating what you're doing, constantly sharing messages. And, and just to say finally that um, any small change is better than no change at all. So working within financial limitations of your business, just tweaking things ever so slightly from time to time really does help make a difference um, and make you uni unique and um, add something special to your proposition. Um, and always tell the sort of story about what you're doing. If you're investing time or investing money, then tell the story and make it worthwhile. That's all from me. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank you very much, Melanie. And you know, so many, um, so many ideas and um, and things that you've that you've shared there. And you know, a lot of the members 
you know, simple little things that they can actually do. Um, I love the piece about the, the collaboration. I think that's that's one key thing that um, that's really important at the moment. It's it's collaborating with the, the, the communities because you're part of those communities. Um, you'll have seen that um, Joyce has sent a wee, a wee message to say that the um, session is going to be extended until quarter past, uh, quarter past 12, not 11. <laughs> Um, so if um, I think it's time for for some questions, um, I see the in in the chat. There's there's lots of different conversations going on in there, and great to see everyone kind of sharing out sharing ideas and uh, top tips there. Um, I think we've got uh, one question that I think we'll we'll go to, um, and it's there, there's been some chat around um, the increase in, in visitor numbers or limiting visitor visitor numbers so we've got someone here um just um what what are the thoughts in terms of the sustainability is um premised on setting limits a uh, discussion on how to control limit visitor numbers seems to be the elephant in the room so um Janie, I know that we've obviously been um, doing a lot of work um and, and Janie mentioned at the, the start of her presentation with regards to to that over tourism piece and um, the, the kind of biodiversity. So, um, do you want to do you want to take that one, Jenny? Um, <clears throat> yes, I guess that is the elephant in the room, and I'm sure any destination that um, has cracked that will be will be laughing. But I think that it is quite true that now is an, an opportunity to look at this, and, and many destinations around the world are looking to shift as it's often said, from volume to value. So rather than assuming because lots of people are coming, the destination is a success to say, well, maybe there are fewer people coming, but they're spending more money, they're spending more time, there, there's a, a higher value. Uh, and there's an opportunity to think about what does value mean? Is it just purely monetary? Um, so spend, clearly an important aspect, but is there also the value of um, contributing to thriving communities, um, you know, and protecting the natural heritage. So there, there's a range of value that tourism and visitors can add. So there is definitely a focus around that. And due to COVID, I think we will be forced to look at the domestic market more than the international market this year and, and maybe for a couple of years to come. But there might be echoes there that down the line, whether it's COVID or whether it's certain restrictions or, or taxes or things that will be put in place to help tackle climate change, we might have fewer international visitors, although they will still be a key market and people we will want to attract to come here. Um, but the, um, they might, there might be a, a smaller number, but hopefully we can get them to stay longer and spend more and kind of engage in that slow travel. But yes, that is one of the more challenging points in the chat. But um, and and dare I say, one thing that we're clearly working on, but um, it's it's not an easy solution. Andrea, do you have any thoughts on on that one? Anything you wanted to add? Um, no, no, I, I agree. I, it's that it's that visitor management process, and I think that all of the DMOs um, and Visit Scotland and government have responsibility to take this seriously. Um, over tourism is an issue with the idea of people um, going damaging the places that they're visiting. I think it's something that needs to be considered. And I think we've learned a lot through COVID actually, just in terms of, of things not being open and, and how much nature has come back. And I think that that's gonna be a really good lesson for people to take forward. Can I, I also add as well that I think as businesses, I mean, I know, you know, visitor numbers and whatever it is in some places, you know, a real issue. But I think as businesses as well, you know, we're all working to welcome tourists and meet visitor expectations. And I think it's businesses responsibility as well to help guests, you know, kind of visit responsibly but also maybe manage you know the times that they visit or just re pre-inform them that maybe they have to book in advance or you know the more communication we can do in advance of their visit and meet expectations that you know they're going to have a much better and enjoyable experience um, and I think it in order for our communities as well um, we need to build confidence there and I think 
building relationships with our communities and with businesses you know tourism is a is a really good positive thing and you know as accommodation providers we, we are you know really benefiting local business and particularly in rural areas and I think the more that we can kind of get to know get to know our guests and communicate with them um the, the better experience it, you know we're going to have so just yeah just just talk to guests and 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 steer them in the right direction I think that helps enormously yeah exactly okay um I have a question um Andrea, you might be able to help with this one. Um, someone's looking, they've been trying to find the, the green logos, um, but can only find the good to go. Uh, the green tourism. Green tourism logos, the green, the green tourism logos. Is that the one you mean? Or, the, 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 or the travel safe one? It, no, they, well, they've just specified the green logos. Okay, so maybe if, well, if they're a member, then the green logos are available in, in the members area, but also just by emailing us and, and, and all of the members are, are given digital versions of the green tourism logo when they achieve an award or if they upgrade or anything like that and also have plaques as well. If, if that's yeah, we, so I was just wanted to add as there was a, a big chat around the travel, um, mm. the good to go and, and safe travel logo. So I did post a link and we can share that afterwards. And I think um, a lot of people have answered that, but um, anybody who has the, um, we're good to go, has access to the safe travel logos through their we're good to go account. They should be able to access it there. If you have a listing on visitscotland.com, if you could also make sure to go into your listing and take it there where we're looking to update um, I think we can update 300 listings automatically where we can match that up, but do double check your listing. And I'm happy to send out more information on, on where to find that afterwards as well. And um, where you can check in with your um, industry relationship manager at Visit Scotland if you have any issues around that. Great, thank you. Um, one question was about, and I'm, I'm not sure if somebody's actually answered it, um, regarding suggestions for food waste, um, because there, there's no collections of, of food waste in the Highlands. Um, they're caught just very remote. So any any ideas in terms of what um, what they could possibly do or, or use? <laughs> Andrea? <laughs> well, it's, it, food waste is, 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 a, is a big issue, especially in self-catering, because it's not really your waste it's what your guests have left behind at the end of their stay um, it, so therefore there's regulations around what you can actually do with it if it's organic waste like salad and and, and uh, vegetables and things like that it can be easily composted in a normal composter if it's um, additional things like meats and things like that that is more difficult and you would you would have to get a specialized uh, in vessel composter in order to do that and, and for a small business that's not um, a viable thing so I think it's it's a case of of trying to encourage your visitors to uh, not to leave food waste if possible um, encouraging them to take it home with them you know explain that a lot of people in the world don't have enough food to eat and, and if it's if it's not perishable and they can take it home to try and take it home with them but it, it is a challenge as to what you can do with some kind of food waste but it, there's lots of different types of composters out there. Um, and I think there's lots of things that you can look at. You could also talk to Zero Waste Scotland because they have a lot of advice, um, free advice they can give people on reducing their food waste and reducing um, what they can do with the, the waste when they have it. Great, thank you. Um, Jenny, I've got a question for you here. Um, there seems to be lots of different things that a business could do. What would you say the best place to start for a self caster What would you do first? Um, I guess it's a difficult um, aspect. I guess there's in, in each of the pillars, there's, there's different things that they could do. So from a, a tackling energy or climate change perspective, like I said, if, if you haven't had a chance to really look at energy consumption um, in, the, in your property, that energy efficiency, review is kind of the basic starting point and you'll get some some advice and it will I also identify opportunities for saving carbon and also what projects could cost so it's really that starting point for then making any decisions if you have money for investment or if there's some 
some simple fixes. I mean, I'm seeing from the chat that clearly lo lots of people are doing lots of things already with EV charge points and having renewable energy and those kinds of things. So, so that's amazing and those are great things to do, but it depends on, on where you are at on that journey. And um, I think one thing that's really come through on some of the other pieces is, is the collaborating with other businesses in your area and in the destination in your communities, which is important to, to kind of move away from seeing yourself just as your, your business, but part of that destination and working together that can really benefit your own business as well as the destination as a whole and that communication piece with the visitor. So sharing your story to your benefit as well as sharing how the visitor, where they can go and maybe, you know, going back to the lots of visitors and um, maybe is there a way of kind of signposting them to le less visited areas to so those hidden gems without picking a particularly sensitive site. So, and, and that communication with the visitor is key. Often a challenge in self-catering because you, you don't see them the same way every day, like a b and owner or a hotel me, but um, so it's a combination of speaking to them, providing the right information on site, but don't forget the power of your social media, communicating with them before they get there. So that there's lots of different things that you can do, but probably getting your energy looked at if you haven't done that yet and networking with other businesses and the communication piece. Oh, we've, we've got a question coming in. Um, remind us where we can get the basic energy efficiency assessment. Um, Jamie. Yeah, I provided the link in the chat and it will also be in the um, presentation. So Zero Waste Scotland has a program called the Energy Efficiency Business Service. Um, so if you go on their website, you can contact them. And at the moment, they provide virtual reviews and they will send you a report after that. OK, thanks. Um, Andrea, um, here's one for you. How do I get my guests to be greener? Um, um, so, for example, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, it's interesting things like uh, we hear a lot of people saying, they turn up the heating, they then open the windows and then leave all the lights on and go out for the day. Um, I, I think communication is a key part of this. Um, telling your story, encouraging your visitors to understand what it is that you're trying to do in a very sensitive area, that you're trying to do something for um, uh, reducing your carbon and, your, and, and helping the planet. But I think also making it as easy as possible for them. So making sure they've got very clear instructions about turning things down. Maybe it's they turn the heating up because they don't understand how to use the heating properly. Maybe get an owl monitor. So it's one of these things that shows you uh, like a smart meter, how much electricity they're using. Um, but I think it's it's about communication and, and clear instructions. And obviously they are there, they're paying their money. You can't go in there and say, shut the window, turn off the lights, but you can try and influence them by telling your story and asking them to care for the planet and to care for the area they've come to visit. Great, thank you. So I'm conscious um, of, of time, Fiona. Um, I think that's the majority of the questions that we've, um, that we've got. So Fiona, over to you. Do you want to, to, to talk about the, the, the restrictions or anything? I'd love to, Donna. I'd love to. Um, just to say, really, that um, we all know that we've been given indicative dates to reopen, and let's not forget they are indicative dates to reopen. So just be very conscious of your responsibility to message to your guests. Um, there's been a huge amount of confusion over the last week or so um, since the 16th of February about whether or not we can welcome more than one household. Now, whilst they have announced, the Scottish government has announced that um, we will be able to have four people from two households in a private domestic dwelling from the 17th of May indicatively, um, that does not include self-catering, that does not include sleepovers. So don't be thinking that suddenly you can get your mates around for a sleep over in your own home and you can't welcome more than one self-catering household. So we are currently looking at having to be in level zero before you can welcome more than one household. Now we are working on this and we're trying to get clarity from the Scottish Government but that is what you need to know at the moment. So you are going to unfortunately have to go back to your guests and explain to them 
that that is the case until such a time as we get any further updates on that. Um, in terms of travel restrictions, oh, and by the way, clearly we will also be striving to get some more financial support for any businesses that cannot operate viably due to those restrictions. In terms of travel restrictions, from the 26th of April, indicatively, we will be we will all be going down to level three. Now, we are not going back to last year's level restrictions. This year's level restrictions mean that if everybody's in level three, we can cross local authority boundaries. So somebody in Argyll and Butte can go and stay in Highland, for example, or Dumfries and Galloway. Now, we're obviously going to have to keep an eye on that because there may be local lockdowns and local restrictions introduced, but we just have no idea what that's going to look like. It all depends on the numbers. It's all data driven, not date driven. So whilst we might be looking at the end of June for um, more than one household, we don't know that yet. So just really keep an eye on it. We have got a news page on the ASSC website, um, which gives you absolutely all the up-to-date information that you could possibly need. We update it constantly um, and we answer questions there. So I know that we've got some questions in the chat. And I know that some were submitted beforehand. So what we will do is we will update those frequently asked questions in due course this afternoon. Um, so anything that you want to know should be there. And if you don't find the answer that you're looking for, please email Fiona at ASSC and we'll get you the answer that you need. Um, yes, you can travel right now to go and set your business up. And um, that's that's deemed to be essential work. So yes, you can go anywhere in Scotland and look after your own business in order to get it ready to reopen. Um, you just need to do it responsibly, which fits the name of this session. Um, is there anything else that I need to respond to immediately that you're seeing? If not, we will um, we will be sharing all the slides. We will be answering all the questions. We will publish this session on the ASSC website um, and you can see the whole thing again. And all I suppose we need to say is that we've got a range of ASSC talks coming up. We've got a meet the experts, which is like speed dating with our trade suppliers, which should be really fun. Um, it, that will set you up with what they do. It'll introduce you to all of our um, recommended suppliers what they do, and then an opportunity for you to then hook up with them to talk a little bit more in depth about what they can do for you and how you can work together. Um, we've got a hustings on Wednesday, the 7th of April, which is very exciting. The ASSC has just published its first ever manifesto, which is quite exciting. Well, I think it's exciting, but I do need to get out more. Um, so we've got a hustings on the 7th of April with leaders um, from all the parties coming to talk to us so that will be really interesting and when it comes to cleaning protocols don't we all love our cleaning protocols we have finalized the revised 2021 cleaning protocols we're just getting sign off from our colleagues down south so that we have a uk-wide approach we will then be updating the ASSC website in order to let you know and on the 13th of april we're going to have another session with Jen at Landlord's Little Helper to go through the practical steps that we all need to take. Now, just to be clear, nothing's really changed. You're not having to do anything different, but really all that you need to know at this stage is that uh, there is less evidence of transmission via surfaces and more evidence of transmission via the air. So it is really important that you ventilate your properties as much as possible and in terms of communication with your guests, Ask them to keep the windows open, not all the time, and let the energy out, the heat out, but you know, ask them to ventilate the house before they leave and ask your cleaners or you while you're doing it to ventilate the house while you're doing so. Um, in terms of actual processes, they're very much the same thing. In terms of whether you can or can't leave books, cushions, et cetera, in the property, again, go back to what you did last year, there's only evidence that uh, COVID-19 lives on paper and cardboard for 30 minutes. So really, you're really safe leaving books and maps in the property. And that is, after all, part of your guest experience. So don't just strip it bare because that's going to compromise your guest enjoyment of the property. But yeah, we will um, publish all of this. We are doing everything we can behind the scenes to look after financial support, 
to look after going forwards. Um, we are also working very hard on the short term let licensing. If you haven't signed up to Scotland's Tourism Accommodation Register, please do. We've already got 120 entries on the registration scheme. We're going to be taking that to the Scottish Government as an example of good practice and how wonderfully compliant you all are with all your health and safety um, obligations. So do help us to help you by signing up to the STAR register. Um, and I think I've covered everything now, but we will respond to all of your queries. And thank you to Andrea and Donna and Janie for, and Mel, sorry Mel, for a really, really, really informative session. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.